Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Newsor Education. Um, I would like to solve a few problems related to um, composition of different forces acting on, uh, on, on the object. Um, now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics 14 presented on Unisor.com. I suggest you to watch this and all other lectures of this course and the prerequisite for this course, which is called Mass 14s, from the Unisor.com because every lecture has very detailed um, explanation, notes, whatever you want. And uh, also there is certain educational functionality built into the site which basically um, allows uh, a supervision um, and then you can actually take exam uh, if you want to, obviously. Uh, and the site is completely free and there are no advertisements. All right, so few problems. I have four problems. Let's do it one by one. First of all, we have a river, obviously a straight river with the flow with uh, uniformly flows. Now, there is a boat in the middle of the river which is tied to the bank by a rope of the length L. Now, there are two forces acting on this particular uh, boat. Number one is the flow of uh, the river and number two, the wind. So these two forces, well, flow is everywhere, right? So including this point. Well, obviously we assume that we are talking about the point object, so this is not really a big boat, but a point object with some kind of a mass uh, in this particular object. So, what's given is the flow of the river is pushing the boat with the force F downstream. Now the wind is perpendicular to uh, the flow of the river and um, its uh, force is 0 0.75 F, slightly less than the river flow. Now as a result of these two forces um, obviously, the resultant force is somewhere here, right? The vector sum of this and this. Well, on my picture, this looks bigger than this, but basically this is F and this is three quarters of the F, right? So let's just disregard this slight um, picture inconsistency. So anyway, this is the resultant force. Now, at the same time, since my boat is tied to the bank, obviously this rope has certain tension and goes to this direction. And this force, the resultant of the wind and the flow of the river, and the tension are all um, balance each other. So basically this is the same as this by magnitude and opposite in direction. And that's why the boat stands still on the river. So this is the condition of whatever we have here right now. What's necessary to determine is uh, what is the force of tension, let's call it P, which keeps the whole thing in balance, and what is this distance from the bank. All right, so this is really kind of an easy problem because if you know these two components, what is their resultant? Well, that's basic geometry. You have this is F and this is 0 0.75 F or three quarters, if you wish, of the F. So what is the diagonal of this uh, right triangle? Well, obviously it's three quarters square plus one square F, which is what? 9, 16 plus 16, 16, 25, 16, so it's five quarters of the F, which is 1.25 F. So this is 1.25 F, which must be equal to the tension of 
the rope because otherwise our boat will not be standing still in the middle of the river. Now, since this is one line, this is exactly opposite vectors, these triangles, this one and this one, obviously are um, two uh, right triangles with the same angles. So they are similar to each other. So to determine this, I can use this similarity, basically L divided by D, this is the D, is the same thing as 1.25, divided by three quarters, right? F divided by 0 0.75 F. So it's five quarters divided by three quarters. This is uh, five quarters divided by three quarters. Uh, so it's five over three, right? So D is equal to three fifths of the L. or 0 0.6 L. So we have determined the tension and we have determined how far from the bank the boat actually stands. And obviously if the wind is stronger the boat will be a little bit further and my uh, rope will be turned a little bit this way. If my uh, flow is stronger then the, uh, the boat will be a little bit down there and my rope will be in this position. And if uh, the wind is zero, then the flow will eventually bring this boat down to, to the bank. Obviously, it will be somewhere here. And this will be the rope along the bank. Okay, that's my first problem. Good, next. All right, now next problem. You have a bridge, which is in the form of an arc of a known radius. Now, there is a car of the mass M on the top of the bridge. Now, what I need to know is how my speed uh, of the car, well, considering the speed is constant, right? So V is constant. Now, how this speed actually depends on the pressure which I have at this particular point, pressure onto the bridge. Now, obviously, if the speed is greater, the pressure is greater. Uh, sorry, the if speed is greater, the pressure is uh, smaller because the car um, uh, the car would be like flying, right, a little bit. And if the speed is very, very uh, big, then the car will just fly off the bridge. Now, if the speed is less, the pressure will be greater at this point, right? So, basically, all I need to know is how my uh, speed on that top depends on the pressure. That's the function which I would like to know. If pressure is given, what's my speed, basically? That's the, that's the main question. And then there is another question. At what speed um, the passengers in the car will feel weightlessness? All right, so first of all, let's just talk about this. Now, this is a circular um, trajectory now, what kind of forces are acting on the car? Well, first of all, obviously, since we are on a, um, a circular trajectory, there must be some force which keeps it on this particular trajectory, right? Now, what is this force? Well, if the speed is, is V, then this, the, 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 this force is MV, um, uh, square divided by R, right? This is my centripetal force. This is uh, started from the previous lectures. V square over R is the uh, centripetal acceleration times mass gives me 
according to the second law of Newton, gives me the force. Now, at the same time, so I know that this must be the force which keeps me on the, on the trajectory. On the same, at the same time, uh, I know from which components this particular force actually is constructed. Well, number one, we obviously have the weight. So the weight also goes this direction, and the weight, considering my um, conditions of this experiment are uh, very close to, to the ground, uh, my weight is equal to m times the acceleration of the free fall. So that's my weight, and it's given because m is given, right? At the same time, there is something which, um, uh, which is the pressure. The pressure goes from the car to the bridge. So the pressure is not acting against the car, it's acting against the bridge. However, uh, there is a reaction of the bridge which basically goes this way which is equal to the pressure, but opposite in, in, in sign, right? So, it goes that way. And what can I say right now about this? That the combination of the weight and the pressure, and I will put pressure with a minus sign because it goes opposite to, uh, I mean, sorry, not the pressure, the uh, equal to the pressure, but it's a reaction of the bridge. Uh, but that's why I put it with a minus sign because it's directed upwards. Pressure goes down, reaction goes up. And this is supposed to be equal to my force which keeps on the trajectory, keeps the car on the, on the trajectory. Now, if I will put it a little bit more detail, it would be mv squared divided by r, from which we can derive how v, my speed, depends on, on the p, right? So, what that would be v is equal to, uh, well, let's just divide it by m, and I will have um, r g minus p over m and square root. That's my v, right? So that's the dependency between p, which is the pressure, and the v, which is the speed um, in this particular position. Uh, and uh, my second question was, when will uh, the passenger in the car feel uh, weightless? Well, obviously, that's when this particular p is equal to zero. Because weight is actually, how do we feel the weight? Well, we press down on the floor and the floor presses on us and that's how we feel uh, our weight. We feel it as the pressure from the floor to us, right? So obviously if we don't press on the floor, the floor doesn't press on us so we don't really feel anything, right? There is no uh, feeling of, 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 the, of the pressure anywhere. So when P is equal to zero, uh, uh, we will have V0, which is the speed of the weightlessness, is Rg, where G is about 9.8 meter per second square, R is whatever the R is, and that's my speed. If I will drive on this arc with this speed, at the top I will feel weightless. Next. Next is a simple problem about pendulum. So if you have a pendulum, this is trajectory. Now, the initial position is this. The angle is phi. My question is, if given the mass, and obviously the thread is weightless, no tension, I mean, there is a tension, but uh, there is no stretching, sir. There is no stretching. So, uh, unstretchable, weightless thread. And this is the initial position. My question is, what's the tension of the thread in this particular position? Well, let's just think about it. What kind of forces, again, are um, 
uh, acting against this particular uh, mass? Well, obviously there is a weight. On another hand, there is a tension which basically goes this way. It's called T tension. Now, why the object goes this way? Well, because the direction of these two forces is tangential to my trajectory, right? So, the resultant of this plus this is equal to this force, uh, which basically pushes it uh, along the trajectory. And regardless of where exactly um, my, uh, my, my pendulum I is located, anywhere, wherever you are, force goes down, tension goes to the center, and the resultant will be uh, on, on, on this side it will be in this direction, on this side it will be in this direction, but it's always tangential, the resultant force is always tangential to a trajectory, because that's exactly what moves it along this particular trajectory, right? So, my question is, what then is my uh, tension? Well, this is tangential, so this is the perpendicular, right? So, if I will put uh, parallel to this one and parallel to this one obviously this is the right angle and this is the right angle right so I know the weight which is basically a hypotenuse in this right triangle from which I can determine this which is exactly the tension if this angle is phi then this angle is also phi, right? So my force, which is tangential, uh, which is the force which pushes along the trajectory would be um, W times uh, cosine phi, and uh, tension, which is this catheters, would be W times sine phi which is m g sine phi because again we are assuming everything on the surface of the earth so my weight which is the gravity is equal to mass times acceleration of the uh, free falling so these are two components which are the tension which goes uh, along this line which connects my mass with the center and the tension acts on the mass by pulling it up, weight pulls it, pu pulls it uh, down, and the resultant, which is this force, is tangential uh, to trajectory. Well, we will actually talk about a uh, pendulum um, at length, because it's really a complicated movement um, since um, your angle is changing all the time and cosine and sine of this angle are obviously changing with it that's why the tension is also changing tension, t uh, tension is uh, the weight times sine of, uh, of the angle so we're dealing with a situation where the force is actually variable right? so the force of the tension is variable and the force of the um, the force which pushes along the trajectory is variable, it depends on the time. Which means it's not really like a simple F equals to MA, uh, where F is a constant uh, 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 force and M is a mass and A is a constant uh, acceleration. This is much more complex thing. It goes to differential equation. But they will, they will spend some time on this, some other time. Now, and the last problem is the following. Uh, let's say you have the wall of, uh, of the castle, which is under siege. You have some troops which uh, are attacking this castle. Now there is a cannon here on the top, and it shoots the cannon, uh, and it shoots the projectile uh, against the troops, right? So the projectile obviously goes this way. Why? Well, because it has initial speed towards horizontal direction, right? On one hand. But on the other hand, there is a weight which goes down. 
So my projectile moves simultaneously this way and this way, and the result is this way, right? Now, what I'm interested in, number one, I have, an, uh, I have to find time of landing. Now, what's given? Well, given obviously the height of the wall, and there is a V, the speed I'm shooting this projectile. Okay, so, number one, what is the time to land? Now, uh, and uh, let's ignore the uh, air resistance, all right? So, this uh, projectile goes horizontally with always the same speed, V. Now, vertically, it basically falls down. So, every second it falls down with certain acceleration because the force of gravity is a constant force. It's equal to M times G, right? Where M is the mass of uh, the projectile. So, I have a constant force. Since I have a constant force, my, my, my height, h, uh, is basically taken by the familiar formula. Formula. Acceleration times square of uh, the time divided by 2. This is how much time it takes to, um, to, to, uh, to cover the length h with a constant acceleration uh, g. Now, h is given, so from here we can find the t. t landing is equal to 2h divided by g and square root, right? From here, 2h divided by g and square root. So I found the time. Now, next is I would like to find the distance, how far this distance um, uh, how, how far uh, I, I will shoot this projectile. Well, obviously, since horizontally I'm always um, uh, making my, my, my motion is uniform, right? So it's a, a uniform velocity. Time, I know. So my distance is equal to V times square root of 2H divided by G. Now, and the last thing which I would like to know is what's the magnitude of the speed? Now, this is my landing uh, piece, right? And the speed is directed at this way, which is basically a continuation of horizontal movement and, uh, and vertical movement. So my question right now is, if this is the vector of speed, what is this component, horizontal component, and what is the vertical component at the point of landing? Well, I know the horizontal component is always V, because it's not changing, there is no air resistance. My vertical component is the speed which falling object gains after this time if acceleration is G. Well, we know the formula, right? V is equal to GT, right? V landing. It's a vertical uh, component I'm talking about. And T of landing, right? So, V landing is equal to G times this. So, G goes in s under the uh, square root. It will be 2HG. Now, if I know the vertical component of the comp uh, 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 vertical component and horizontal component of my um, landing speed, then obviously I can use the Pythagorean theorem and get the length of this hypotenuse. If this is my uh, vertical and this is my horizontal components, so my v uh, ending. This is the speed. Um, is equal to square of this plus square of this, v square plus 2hg. So that's the answer. All right, basically that's all I wanted to present today. These are really very uh, easy problems. Um, I think I should come up with something a little bit more complex, and I will. But anyway, these are kind of introductory problems into uh, basically all the dynamics uh, of, of these uh, superposition uh, of, uh, of the forces 
um, using you know gravity, uh, pendulum, and all different kinds of uh, scenarios we can consider. All right, um, what I do recommend you to do is um, go to the website unizor.com to this course Physics 14. Um, then you can open the uh, section called Mechanics. Uh, within the Mechanics, there is a Dynamics section where um, I'm considering um, superposition of the forces. And uh, in there, there are some theoretical uh, lectures which have been already um, put on the, uh, on the net. And there are these problems. I think it's called problems number one. Yes, problems number one within the superposition. And uh, try to do it yourself. Whatever, whatever the problem you, you, you have over there, try to do it yourself. And then check against the answers, which also are um, on, the, uh, on the web uh, in, in these notes. Uh, just to check how you're basically going through these uh, relatively easy problems. All right? And then next lecture will probably be more complex. <laughs> All right, thanks very much and good luck.